So hello and good evening, this is Ruth Pozuelo from Curval.com and I am finally back from my vacation. I'm sorry it's been taking so long for me to get back. Um, I thought I would actually do a few videos during the vacation, but uh, I was enjoying it too much, <laughs> to be honest. No, really, I, I needed the, the break, so it's been fantastic. I hope you also are having a great vacation. Or if you had it, I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. But now I am back, so I will continue publishing the normal schedule that I always do, which is Monday, Wednesday and Friday, and then sometimes I publish uh, an extra video if I have the time or something special happens. Uh, something I want to let you know, in case you already you're not doing it already is that i have two twitter accounts i have um Pozuelo is my personal account and corbalan is my company account and in both accounts i inform when i'm not publishing anything or i'm off for some reason or i would publish an extra video or you know things of the like i've made some mistakes to inform sometimes, but most of the time I, I just let you know, okay, this is what's going on. I'm not able to do that on YouTube, Twitter is the perfect place to do it. So if you want to know if I'm going to miss the video or if I'm going to produce an extra video, you will be able to know it there. I inform on both accounts, so you can follow anyone that you like, or just don't follow if you're wonder why I didn't publish a video, you can just search me on Twitter, you need to follow. Um, but just to let you know, I will um, explain if I'm not able to publish something. So you're always up to date to what's going on. But let's go back to today's video. Um, it is actually a very interesting video. I'm going to show you how to export data to SQL with R. And I am going to do it with an example that actually makes sense. So you will see when this trick is useful if you don't have the need for it now. So, yes, without any more delay, how about we jump into Power BI and I show you how to do this. Okay, so here we are in Power BI and uh, what you are looking at is my Google Analytics report, the report for Curval.com, the website. And this is a report I use uh, daily. And uh, one of the things I've been having problems with is that as the site grows, you know, the data grows too, and every time I press refresh, everything downloads. You know that Power BI does not have incremental refresh, which means that when you press refresh, everything, even the things that already have there, has to be pulled again into Power BI. And uh, there are two pain points on that. Pain point number one is that it takes so long and the more data you have, the, the horrible it gets. Uh, using the Power BI connector out of the box, you will be able to pull the data, but still it takes too long. And uh, another problem is the API limits. Uh, Google Analytics have API limits and when your site gets big enough, you won't be able to pull the data basically in one go. And uh, that is the problem that I have been having. And what I wanted to do is to dump the data somewhere else and then pull it back in and just make the call into from Google Analytics from um, just make new data, you know, calling new data. So to do that, I'm going to show you. Um, we will, for example, I'm going to take just random. It doesn't matter, just page tracking. And uh, I'm going to show you how to export these into um, into SQL. This is into a local SQL database. This is a, a SQL database that you have in your computer. Okay. Uh, I actually haven't tried to export to Azure, but I think uh, I think it's possible. If you want me to to try it out because you are not able to, let me know, and I'll, I'll see. What the, it needs to be changed in the code. I think it's actually possible, but I haven't tried myself. So what I've done is I actually exported all the data for uh, all my Google Analytics data into a local SQL database on my computer. 
Okay, so I can pull from that. And how do I do that? Well, we are going to use R, as the title says, and what we need to do is we need to first go to R Studio. If you don't know what R Studio is or how to use R with Power BI, I actually have a video on that, and I will post a link in the description box. So here is the video. It's called Download and Install R for Power BI. I will post the link down below. So if you haven't used R before, you need to take these steps first. Then you can come back to the video and continue. Okay, so let's go back to R. So once we are here in R, what we need to do is to install a package. And it is called R O D B C. No, let's do it again. Install packages or or o d b c i already have installed it but to install it you just write like this click enter and uh, it will download it and install it so once you have done that you don't need r anymore you can just close it down and move to power bi so now, before I continue, I want to give credit to uh, uh, BI Insight. Uh, this is uh, where I actually found uh, the trick on how to export uh, the data directly from Power BI or from Power Query. And uh, I will also post the link to him, right? So you can see. But he explains uh, how to do it, how to install manually the package if you have our server. Um, then he goes through the guide and then here he gives you the R code. Now, his R code did not work for me. Let me show you. Let's go back to Power BI. So let's say that page tracking, this is the one that we want to import to an SQL table. We go to transform, run our script. And here you have to copy the code that I am going to give you here. And it says like this, this is calling the library that we just installed. And here it says use driver SQL server. This is, you know, the local database, uh, SQL Express. And then here you write, you remove this database name and you have to write the name of your database. Let's say that is called Google Analytics. Will make sense, right? Then username for the uh, database and password. You write it here, you remove that and you write your password, whatever it is. In the blog post I show you, he didn't have the username and password and obviously it worked for him. I don't know if it's the way I installed my local database that it requires it, but I could not export anything until I actually wrote my credentials here. You can try both. You can actually remove that and see if it works for you or you know, let it be. The next thing you need to change is here, the table name. So this is because it's called page tracking. Let's say that we're going to call it page tracking. This is how our table is going to be called in SQL. And append. If it's the first time you download it, it doesn't matter if you write true or false, otherwise it will. Once you're ready with that, you click OK and the entire table will move automatically to um, your SQL database, your local SQL database. It's really, really neat. So let me tell you a few things I learned by doing this. So first of all, as I told you before, you don't need to create a table. It creates by itself if it's the first time. So this is really neat. Otherwise, you would have to go and create a database, the tables, the column names. You will misspell something and it will be a nightmare. 
Okay, so you don't have to do anything it creates by itself. Something that you have to take into account, if you have spaces in the column names, it will remove them. The script does that. I don't know if there are any um, settings that you can change in the script. Could be. Maybe the rows true, perhaps, and it wouldn't do it. It is a bit of a pain that it does that. But now we'll show you, I will tell you why later. But uh, try actually that with row two. Perhaps that will fix that problem. Um, you need to add the username and password for the table. Uh, without it, for me, it didn't work. Maybe it works for you. Try it and let me know if it does. Another thing, one of the conditions that you have is append true and append false. If you write append true, and it's the first time you write the table, it will create a new table, no problems. If you already have created that table and you have append to, and you are pulling exactly the same data, but a little bit more, it will create duplicates. So it will definitely, it will append. It will not look and say, okay, do I have this row already? No, it will just dump everything again and append it, which is a pain and you have to be careful. I don't know if there is any way to fix that. If there is any R expert there, please let me know. I would love to know. So when you are actually sending in new data, make sure there is only new data that you don't have uh, duplicates. Of course, you can remove them later with Power BI, but why? Why? If you write a pen false, it will delete, not the database, this is wrong. It will be delete the table and create a new one. So be careful with that. It is good in some ways and it's bad in other ways. So append false, it will remove everything you have and create a new. Append true, if you have duplicates, it will create duplicates. So this is what I've learned so far about that script. Again, if you are an R expert, please let me know how to fix this stuff because I would love to use that script a little bit better than I'm doing today. So now why is a problem that is actually removing the spaces on the row names let me show you because i'm going to show you what i'm doing with that google analytics file okay so here we are back in uh, my google analytics report and i have here my page tracking that comes from sql so this is data that i downloaded from google analytics into my local sql database up to a certain date so I have it until, you know, 1st of August, I think it is. So from the beginning of history to 1st of August, I dumped all the data into SQL. And this is what you, what I'm pulling in here. Wonderful. Now, what I'm doing now is I'm calling the Google Analytics API and saying, give me data from the 2nd of August onwards. Okay. So I am pulling in new data. And what I'm doing then is I'm appending the SQL data together with the Google Analytics data. So I'm basically faking a automatic refresh. <laughs> it would be great if it would be an, an incremental refresh. The, there is no, so you have to fake it. And this is one way to do it. Now, if you are using, for example, Azure SQL, I might move my database to Azure in the near future. One of the things I don't want to do is to actually download all that data every time I click refresh, because that's what's going to happen if you do it this way. If you do it in Power Query, you click refresh and this will put new data from here, even if it's the same. And even if you come here and say, don't load, it will load. And this is one of the ways refresh works in, um, in Power BI or in Power Query. So it, it is a bit of a pain that it actually does not respect these once you have appended tables. But what you can do is actually load the SQL queries into Power BI and then do a union with DAX because then you can say, don't refresh this and they won't refresh and you can only continue refreshing the Google Analytics data from the API. I hope you understand what I mean. 
perhaps I should do a video on incremental refresh and then do a, like a specific case for that so you can see it. But this was about exporting data to SQL. So, yeah. So, yeah, this is all. Yeah, I have one more thing. Uh, let me show you. Yeah, I find myself actually um, using the same scripts on and on and on. Okay. And I have uh, in my library a personal uh, folder that is called uh, Power BI Function and Scripts. And every time I need something, I just go there and I pick it up because there are scripts that are used very often. One of them are export data to, uh, to Excel, or now my favorite one is export data to SQL. I use Google Maps a lot. And uh, I use the, the scripts. The scripts are actually not in the readme file. Sorry, the scripts are here. So this is one I use a lot. Query uh, Google Maps API. And well, why do it two times? I already have done the code. Why not copy it on, on the new place? So I thought that I would share my favorite Power BI function and scripts. This is, of course, not all of them. I will continue updating this. I just started this on my vacation, so <laughs> uh, as you can see, not a lot of stuff was done. Uh, but um, I will continue updating these. I will post the link on the description box. And uh, of course, if you want to help me and contribute with your favorite uh, Power BI function scripts, that would be fantastic. So here I have three for now, and here. I have the links to the power, to the YouTube videos that explain how to use them. I don't have the SQL because I'm making it now, you know, I haven't published it yet. But as soon as this is published, I will put the link here. So hopefully you can use it. I will put also my calendars and all that kind of stuff. So, so if you need something, oh, how did Ruth do that? You can come here and just download the, the, the script. Okay, I'm talking too much. I've stopped the video for today. <laughs> okay, so this is actually all for today. Uh, if you like the video as usual, let me know by liking it or by sharing it. I would appreciate that. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions about the video, let me know in the comment box or any of the social channels listed below. And uh, subscribe. I publish Power BI videos three times a week, Monday, Wednesday and Fridays. Make sure you click the bell to receive YouTube notifications to receive when I publish a new video because YouTube is not doing that anymore. You have to actually click that bell to make sure that you get a notification when I publish a new video. So with that said, I hope you have or are having a great vacation and I will speak to you again on Wednesday. Have a great Monday. Bye.